Hi everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. Today we are going to be reviewing this one. This is Law by Alexandra Bracken. This is the Owl Crate box from 20, not 20 something, it was 2021. I believe this was the February box, which was the Greek mythology themed one. So this is a special edition. The regular edition is a white version of this. So before I get to the review, I'm going to say that it took me until halfway through the book to realise why Medusa is on the cover because the main character, Law, does not have snakes for her and it's because um, when she was a child she was such a little spitfire of a child that she was referred to as the little Gorgon and Medusa is a Gorgon. Also I love this cover because the model's jaw is uneven in the same way that mine is and that is a very weird thing to like a cover for but I like this. So I finally decided to start rating and reviewing books based off subjective enjoyment rather than objective goodness. Because um, I've read a lot of books this year, which you can see reviews up on this channel and on my blog, that I have loved purely because they've hit so many of my niche interests rather than being like actually good books. And um, this is, is one of those. So this review is very biased and I will almost definitely overlook some of the negatives of this book that for other people would have dropped down the star rating a lot more than it did for me. So this book in other reviews has very often been described as Greek mythology meets the Hunger Games and that is honestly the best summary of the story. Many years ago nine Greek gods rebelled against Zeus and as punishment they were forced to walk the earth as mortals every seven years. And they are hunted down by descendants of ancient bloodlines who want to obtain their power in, immor in immortality, which they get by killing the god. So our main character, Melora, Law Perseus, turned her back on the gods in eternal glory as a child after her family was murdered by one of these rival bloodlines at the end of the last event. And she's been hiding away from these for the past seven years until a childhood friend and a gravely wounded goddess convince her to return to the hunt for revenge. So, I loved this book from the first chapter, however I was also very confused about what was happening for the first few chapters. <laughs> um, yeah, I was quite lost, because it has to introduce hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years of history, and a lot of new terminology, and it's got to include that in a way where it doesn't feel out of place alongside telling the present day storyline of the current character, and also her like backstory as there's very little information revealed up front. So having all this information from two, at the beginning it seems like very separate storylines, that's a touch overwhelming. But things were pretty much soon explained and in addition to steadily adding to the history throughout. So I'm going to read you a quote that I think very nicely summarises what's going on in one of the early chapters because the best friend of Law is just a completely regular human being. He has no idea about all this Greek history. And I love him because he is out of place, but he's so ready to get involved. <laughs> they sat in silence for several minutes after Law had finished giving Miles a ruthlessly pared down explanation of the Aegon, the nine gods that had been created to punish, including the one whose wound she had seared shut in their living room, and the nine bloodlines descended from ancient heroes chosen to hunt them. She distilled over a thousand years of history into mere minutes, feeling more and more insane as his face remained carefully blank. It wasn't like Law could blame him. Hearing her say the words, For seven days, every seven years, the gods walk on earth as mortals. If you can kill one, you become a new god and take their power in immortality, but you will be hunted in the next Aegon as well. So yeah, that quote very nicely summarises a lot of information. And even when you get to that point in the chapter, you just need that further clarification that you're not just completely lost. So at its heart the Aegon is a competition. I think I'm, say I'm saying that right, I'm calling it the Aegon. It's spelled A-G-O-N, so I'm calling it the Aegon. So at its heart is the competition and this is a trope that I'm starting to fall back in love with. Hello Hunger Games, hello, um, is it the second or third book in the Darker Shade of Magic series, so it's a competition. But yeah, this is a trope that was very popular, not really back in the day, but in like 2012. And I missed it so much. I feel at home again. And I like this trope so much because there's constant danger to keep the characters on the move. We have lots of new locations, lots of new settings, lots of new characters. And they're also thrown into action that makes them fear for their lives because there's very high stakes in this book. And these high stakes and this constant fear of danger and action is, 
know, it gives me like plenty of intrigue to keep me interested and wanting more. Like even when there are slower points in this book, there's still the fear in the background. And I quite like that. So Law is a character who is very simultaneously strong and vulnerable and she balances those two traits well. Her past is kind of slowly revealed throughout flashback chapters that focus on her childhood all the way up to the end of the last Aegon where her family were murdered. In the current Aegon she doesn't want the power or the immortality that comes with killing a god but she does want her family avenged and the killer just happens to be a god with a powerful bloodline. So there's a lot of discussion of does she want power because if she wants to avenge her family she's going to have to become the thing that she kind of seeks to destroy. And I really loved reading her character development over the course of this book. She evolved from this very damaged soul clinging onto revenge for her dark childhood leading up to the murder of her family. There's a lot of dark and bad things that have happened in her life. And she, so she evolved from this very like vulnerable, sad, defensive creature into someone who was truly a force to be reckoned with, who I could fear. But if I did meet her in real life, I would let her kill me. She, I, I love her. I love these strong, scary women. I also loved friendships and the development throughout this book and this really interesting friend group dynamic, which consists of an old god, a new god, um, law. <laughs> who has been part of this god thing forever, Miles who has no clue what's going on at any moment in time, and just someone who happens to be a friend of the new god. There's like a very wide range of contrasting personalities and backstories which gives this very interesting friend group dynamic which is very exciting to read. So one scene that stood out to me for different reasons than the rest, this scene was like a little moment to take a breath amongst all of the action. Um, it was a conversation between Law and Athena where they're discussing how strong women are often forgotten and excluded from Greek law and Greek history. And even the ones who are remembered seem to have their stories twisted. Um, my beloved Medusa. So bringing in these strong feminist themes always felt right because there's so many strong female characters in this story and it was nice to have a very wide representation of strong women from current day and the past and that was very beautiful for me. This review is starting to get long so I'm going to just end it here. <laughs> so the pros of this book is that it hits pretty much so, I was going to say all of my special interests, it hits so many. It was, you know, the joy of the Hunger Games in 2012 and the joy of Percy Jackson. <laughs> um, and also the ending for this book was surprisingly perfect for a thing that has so many complex storylines and so many ways it could have been taken, like this ending was very, very well done. And the cons of the book is probably like the big one is that it takes sometimes slightly too long to reveal information. So as I said at the start of the view, it takes you a few chapters to work out what's actually happening. And then Law's backstory is like drip fed to you throughout in these flashback chapters. So it takes a little while to actually work out what, like, what the important thing is. But I like that because it keeps me guessing. So I gave this book five stars on Goodreads. I'll make it a 4.5 because that whole teasing information thing is probably an issue. But I, I gave it five stars. This is one of my favorite books of the year. And I hope I can find something very similar. I want more Greek mythology books to read. I have Song of Achilles somewhere. I don't know where it is anymore. And I've got my Percy Jackson shrine over on this shelf here. But I want more Greek mythology in my life. And if I don't get it, I'm going to write it myself. So thank you for watching this view. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye.